This video is brought to you by Keeps. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're providing to the entire UE community. Also, before diving in, the video is available ad-free in an audio podcast form on Locals.com. It's basically Patreon, but better, with merch discounts and video topic feedback, etc. And also, my entire content library for the whole channel is up on Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative, if you'd like to check out some alt tech options for free. Okay, here we go with the official Godfall review, and right off the bat, I want to make one thing crystal clear. This game is not Anthem. This game is not even like Anthem beyond the passing resemblance, purely visual by the way, between plates and javelins, and maybe the concept of loot, but that is also a common thread between any other title in this entire genre. In reality, the games are not similar. They merely look a bit alike, kind of, sort of, and anyone who has played them both through to end game will immediately know this. That being said, Godfall has problems. Not Anthem-level problems, not by any stretch, but it certainly has problems, and my first, most critical, and most aggressively rehashed point for this entire review right now is that the game does not even come close to deserving its price tag. I have no idea who decided that this game should be $60 on the Epic Store and $70 on next-gen consoles. I have no idea why they decided to make that call, but it is an absolute embarrassment of a title at that price totally and completely undeserving of being purchased, with, in my opinion, little to no viable option for overcoming that barrier with what it offers today. What you see is what you get. Godfall is a flashy, combat-oriented game, and I would be lying if I claimed that I did not have a decent 10 or so hours-ish of fun while playing, but with a campaign that will probably last, I don't know, 6-ish hours, if you just go quickly through an 8, maybe 10 at most, if you do all the bonus objectives, and then an endgame loop predicated on repetition, I can't sit here and tell you that it is even close to worth it to buy the game for such a high price tag right now today. Even less so when you factor in currency exchange ratios globally, which can drive the price up even higher in certain other countries. For this one, I've decided to break it down into pros and cons, at least for this particular review. Collecting my thoughts has taken a bit longer than I would normally have liked, because the truth is, I was very much conflicted on this one. On the one hand, the loot and the combat in this game are somewhat successful, and that's important, but on the other, almost every single supporting structure is either inadequate, broken, or poorly designed to the point where experiencing the loot becomes a chore. But when discussing the game in depth, I need to pivot over and talk about today's video sponsor because millennials are going bald from too much stress. And Godfall, absolutely very easily, may end up contributing to that stress. Keeps can help prevent hair loss, which two out of three men above the age of 35 suffer from. Also, the primary demographic who watches this channel is men ages 25 to 45. So, hey, yes, you, looking at you. Keeps can be delivered right to your home, no doctor's visit necessary, and through the link down below, keeps.com slash UEG, you can get 50% off your first purchase. Some men even experience hair growth while on Keeps, so if you have any interest at all, make sure to use the link down below for 50% off your first purchase. Again, that's keeps.com slash UEG. More five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. I'll start with the pros. Godfall has a very high skill ceiling, and the combat loop is incredibly fun in short bursts. There are a number of mechanics here that mesh together in order to construct something that might look like a simple hack and slash, because the way I play it, honestly, that's probably why it looks that way, but in reality can be experienced as something much more. First, there is the breach mechanic, which is basically just a guard bar, or a stamina bar that many games have. If you complete that breach bar, you open the enemy to a finisher or a stun attack or whatever, and in a lot of fights this will be happening with decent frequency. Then there is the parry system, and keep in mind pretty much all of these individual systems have stats associated with them, so if you want to power them up and play off of that specific mechanic, it is somewhat possible to do in the end game. The parry system is, again, fairly standard. Proper timing can deflect ranged attacks or stagger enemies, and I found myself dodging more frequently than anything else instead of parrying, and this is older footage, by the way, in the background, but when I started to grasp the rhythm of parrying, combat began to flow much more smoothly. Then, there are a number of moves and attack mechanics from the skill tree. Not all of them appear to be useful in endgame, but you can get northern and southern weapon techniques, weapon timing attacks, petrifying slams, life drains, weak points, shield abilities, and much more. This is more of a choose-what-you-like situation, because the skill tree will take probably 18-ish, if I had to guess, hours to fill in. And like I said before, not everything is viable in endgame. From what I've seen so far, really just critical hit builds and weak point builds have any real future at the moment. But that's not a pro, that's a really big con, so more on that later. 
After all that is the Soul Shatter mechanic and the weapon polarity systems. Soul Shatter is just bonus damage stored within the enemy, using light attacks to build it and a heavy attack or a shield attack to detonate. It's useful, scalable, and fairly interesting, with the explosions adding to the power fantasy of visceral godlike combat. And lastly, the weapon polarity where you just use one to slowly charge up the other and then you switch for a damage boost and an explosion attack. All in all, the combat does have depth. It doesn't seem like it does, necessarily, at first, and you can certainly play it in a one-dimensional way. I played in a very one-dimensional way for, like, maybe six full hours before really expanding my arsenal and grasping the combat much better, but when you begin to take advantage of the different mechanics and grow towards that skill ceiling, the combat is good, and I would overall state that the fundamental combat loop lands squarely in the pro category. Now on to loot and customization. Loot in any loot-based game is essential, obviously. It's in the name, and I'm hesitant to call the loot in this game a pro, per se, mostly because a lot of the attributes are worthless, especially at endgame, and I even had some where it would say things like, give a bonus of zero for every 20 adjacent vitality, so basically the augment was totally worthless and gave a bonus of zero no matter what I did, but in general, at least for the first 12 or so hours, give or take, Attributes are very fun to stack, and there is a decent amount of customization. The basic foundation of loot in this game is not actually broken, hence my strong disassociation from Anthem, where the loot was just so botched the game was literally unplayable. In Godfall, you have scaling rarity from gray to yellow, upgradable and enchantable with various resources, which are engaging and fun to farm for the most part, at least in the beginning. With options here and there about what stats to enhance or choose for the final masterwork on each item, and all of it meshes together with the augment system to create something that does have a future, I believe, even if it's just not there yet. There are two weapons for each build and then some gear slots like amulets, rings, lifestones, and a banner. These each have a number of different stats, but those stats are restricted somewhat based on the slot. Not sure on the specifics here, I'm sure someone will eventually create a spreadsheet online, but it does matter what you can roll where because if it's too restrictive, which it doesn't feel like it is, but maybe it is, I'm not sure, the game will have far less longevity, less than it does already, which is a really, really bad thing. Then there are the Augments, with a power consumption mechanic similar to what you might see in Warframe. And again, there is a comparison between this and Warframe. I really don't find them to be all that similar, that's why I'm not really focusing on that. And the bonuses here are certainly fun to play with, the Augment bonuses that is, but it's not anything that I would proclaim as revolutionary for the industry, not by any stretch. All in all, from what I played, Critical Hit rapidly became one of the two clearly viable endgame builds, the other being weak point damage as far as I can tell, and I enjoyed combat, the customization, and the loot farming for upwards of 10 to 12 hours at least. But now we move on to the cons, and brace yourself for these. First up is length and repetition. The campaign is fun-ish, but it's extremely short, and there is very little mechanical diversity here. You'll be fighting repeated enemies constantly, and as is true with any loot-based game, the end game loop is very obviously where the entire experience truly is supposed to start. This is facilitated by the level-based loot. So up to level 50, which is the character's maximum, you'll be replacing the gear that you find with every couple of missions. Like, every time you go up a few levels, it's very important to replace your gear. It's like in WoW, in World of Warcraft, when you're going from level 20 to level 25, most of your gear is going to be drastically different in power scaling. So all the way through the campaign up to max level 50, it's very clear that that's just prepping for the end game. This is when the game is at its most fun, when you're actually in the beginning, in the prep phase, before you get to what is supposed to be the most fun. When you are scaling quickly and climbing through the levels, it's great, but when you hit endgame, it all falls apart. There is effectively two systems for endgame, which are the dream stones and then the procedurally generated tower climb with floor stops or whatever it is. Now, I say procedurally generated, but that's a lie. The false depth here is just so incredibly obvious I can't do anything other than criticize it. Universally. Like, it's just bad. It might have a future, but as it stands, it is purely bad. It purely deserves to be criticized as vitriolically as possible. You have time trials and survival trials. That's it. If there's more, I haven't seen any of it a single time. And it's just so lazy and repetitive, you'll be sick of the tower after just a few times going through. 
Also, the doors, which you get to choose from, big air quotes there. Yeah, I can't make sense of these because the only thing they seem to really indicate is the enemy type with the symbol on the front, of which there aren't even all that many. Again, repetition to the maximum. And then sometimes a purple or a red one seems to have unlockable chests inside, which is probably the most exciting part of all the endgame content, period. But mostly the doors are not distinct enough, not meaningful enough. And yeah, you get little bonuses after some rooms and maybe that's what the symbols mean but I just didn't care enough to memorize or learn them or look up a spreadsheet or whatever because it gets so boring and so repetitive so quickly. I just couldn't do it anymore. But that's just the tower. The other part is the Dreamstones. The problem is the Dreamstones mostly exist as a bridge between the tiny little campaign and the max level of 50, so most of them can't even drop the best gear, which makes them obsolete for anything other than resource farming. And the Dreamstones are just random segments of the campaign you just played. Now, that might be okay if there was sufficient modification to these, but there isn't. It is so lazy and so rehashed, I kid you not, when you play the Dreamstones from the first few missions in the game, in the original campaign, you have to do the tutorial stuff again. You have to unlock a spirit chest one by one, like in the beginning, and learn how to like climb or whatever, because they didn't even bother to remove the tutorial from endgame Dreamstone missions. They literally just copy and pasted them and said, here, go, now get to 50, playing the exact same content you played in the original campaign with no modifications, even, oh my God, seriously, you have to go through and do like the little tutorial steps every time you play that. Worse yet, even though some of the bosses are pretty cool the first time, you are fighting them over and over and over and over, so they get extremely boring. Not only that, but a few of them have like really absurd moves. They stagger you and chain stun you, and maybe if you're much, much more technically skilled than I am, you can navigate the gauntlet of flying orbs or the space beams of death, which is chain stun, but I got staggered and knocked down so often in certain ones of these fights, I couldn't even stand them. To make things worse, it feels like the currency scaling is just broken. When you start out, it's fun. It is. It's balanced fine and starts out fun, and upgrades can be bought or spammed out frequently to try and get a new piece of gear with solid attributes, but it's obsolete after 15 more minutes. But as you get to endgame, which is where the game is supposed to truly start and shine, the high, high level stuff, 50, 49, whatever, takes tens of thousands of materials to upgrade a single time. And if you are attempting to roll the dice a bunch of times on similar items to get like one usable piece of gear for a particular build, you will need to grind out an insane amount of currency from the bosses and the missions that are just copy pasted back in with zero new content. And you are probably already sick of them due to the repetition that sets in even before true endgame. At its core, the Dreamstone missions and the Tower of Trials seem like they may have potential, maybe, but as they exist today, it's an extremely limited format with false depth. It's all false depth and a minuscule lifespan before it becomes boring and tedious. Oh, and I forgot to say this. There's no minimap ever. The entire experience is just one little GPS marker that sometimes even makes mistakes and guides you the wrong way. That happens plenty of times. Oh, and I got stuck in walls a bunch of times. And if you get stuck in a wall or stuck in a chest, that's it. You fail the mission. You have to restart. That was fun. You can't jump. There's no jump button. And you have no minimap. There's no minimap. It's literally like a rat in a maze, but there's a string tied directly to your nose that just yanks you straight through the entire thing. It's entirely possible that if I min-max certain other build concepts or whatever it is, I could find something that fits my playstyle more than just flat critical hit, but the game is so repetitive and boring already, I cannot possibly be convinced to farm enough materials to do that. Also, as if this was not already enough, the Valor Plates, which are essentially the classes, are mostly just false depth as well. Let me explain, because it might seem like they aren't, but they really are. Six of the plates, which is half of them at the moment, have a status effect or ailment attached to them. Shock, chill, bleed, poison, curse, ignite, I think. And as far as I am aware, if I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong, these are all just a dot, damage over time. Not a modifier, a simple damage over time effect. And the plates just have a 10% chance to apply whatever their corresponding ailment is while not in their ascendant mode or their god mode or whatever it is where you charge it up and then are super sane for a little bit. But most of the time you just have a 10% chance to apply one of these six identical dot effects. 
Now think about what that means for build diversity. A lot of the weapons can roll stat modifiers such as 30% damage while the target is bleeding or 30% damage while the target is ignited. But realizing that there is literally no difference in these mechanics, they're all just flat damage over time with tick, tick, damage, damage, except maybe intrinsic resistances on the enemies, I don't even know. You start to understand that six of the plates and all of the subsequent stat modifiers that correspond to their individual ailment are the same thing. It's literally six completely reused primary builds or frames or whatever, Valor plates, I don't even know. They just have a different name and a different color on their effect, but they're the same thing. It's pathetic. Ultimately, I could keep going on flaws for quite a while, like a really long time. And the more you play the end game, the more you realize how bare bones the game really is and how flawed it really is. This title would have been fine for $20 okay-ish maybe for 30 and possibly, probably not though, acceptable at $40 for purchasing this. But to try and sell this shit for 60, even $70, it's an insult. The game isn't even close to Anthem levels of catastrophe. Although actually, I don't know. Now that I've gone through this whole thing, I'm almost rethinking that. But no, Anthem was just more fundamentally broken for a lot of reasons. This game is not close to Anthem because it's actually playable and has usable loot for the most part. But this thing is priced in as a full AAA game, so I'm going to treat it like it deserves. Godfall is an embarrassment of a game at its current price tag. It might even have future DLC and subsequent patches, maybe, but at that time, it might, like, it might become something that's worthy after future DLC and all that crap, but by that time, who even knows how much money we'll have paid for it? If it were $20, I'd review it kindly. I'd be like, yeah, okay, you know, imperfect, flawed, it's got its little different... $20 maybe. I'd review it fine. It isn't though. It isn't. Someone decided that this piece of shit was a $70 title. And for that reason, I'm urging you, I'm like strongly urging you to pass until it's in the bargain bin for like $10, $20 at most. Yeah, maybe you can get it early and get it for the 40, but I don't, because of that decision to make this a $60, $70 full price game, I don't think they deserve any of that money. You should wait until it's an absolute bargain bin trasher and then pick it up. I had fun for like 10 hours, not even, well, maybe 10 to 12, I don't somewhere in there. And then everything that the game is supposed to be, a looter, end game grind, procedural, tower climb, blah, blah, whatever, it sucked bad. And if I had to rate it out of 10 for the current price tag, it's a four, but having just read my own script, now I'm leaning towards a three. It just does not deserve that price tag. And I'm insulted that they would put that price tag on it and they should feel ashamed. But that's it. If you want support, there are links down below. Locals, Odyssey, Keeps, and a few other things like merch and another gaming YouTuber to check out. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.